We have heard about the consolidation that is often perceived to be a difficult concept but students find the consolidation question even more difficult to attempt in term of technique. Let us look at the basics of consolidated statement of financial position or balance sheet. Since the balance sheets of a parent and its subsidiary are prepared separately but for consolidation purposes they are combined on a line-by-line -line basis by adding together balance sheet items of assets, liabilities and equity of both parent and subsidiary in order that the Consolidated balance sheet should show financial information about the group as if it was a single entity. Now let us look at the individual components of the consolidated balance sheet. During consolidation one thing should be kept in mind that consolidated balance sheet is being prepared as a single entity. Considering this rule some of the items of individual financial statements are reported on the face of consolidated balance sheet. Some of the items are not shown and some new items are added. Now look at the items line by line that normally appear on individual balance sheets of parent and subsidiary. Under the assets we have property plant and equipment, current assets, investments and goodwill. Under equity we we have share capital and retain earnings. Then comes non-controlling interest. Under liabilities we have current liabilities and non-current liabilities. Let us see what would appear on the face of consolidated balance sheet. Well most of the items of both parent and subsidiaries are added to each other and then are adjusted against. Any additional information that is given in the question, like property plant and equipment appearing on both parent and subsidiary balance sheets are added on the face end. Any adjustments like fair value gain or loss and excess depreciations are adjusted on the face. Similarly current assets of both are added together and any adjustments like intragroup transactions end. Unrealized profits are made here. Investments in subsidiary is not shown in the consolidated balance sheet. Goodwill is a new item that comes as a result of consideration paid exceeds the worth of subsidiaries. Net assets acquired and it appears on the face of consolidated balance sheet. In equity, share capital represents the control. Since the parent company's owners control the subsidiary company that is why the share capital is shown for only the controlling owners. The retained earnings are now group retained earnings and represent the combined earnings of parent and subsidiary after adjustments. Non-controlling interest comes into existence when the parent acquires more than 50% but less than 100% of the subsidiary share. The valuation of NCI includes date of acquisition fair value value of shares, not acquired by parent plus shares of subsidiaries post acquisition profits and finally the liabilities of both parent and subsidiary are added together and adjustments are made for any intra-group transactions. Now let us see an example and solve it. In this question P acquired 75% shares of S. In other words P acquired 37,500 shares out of 50,000. That gives P full control over the net assets of S and also results in NCI of 25% or 12,500 shares. The NCI is measured at fair value that is $20,000 made up of $1.6 multiplied by 12,500 shares. The acquisition has formed the group for which P will prepare the consolidated statement of financial position. Let us see how to prepare the consolidated statement of financial position or balance sheet of P group. See the solution on the right of the question image. First of all add the amounts of 
property plant and equipment of both P and S that is 60,000 plus 50,000 resulting in a total of 110,000. The goodwill is calculated by adding purchase consideration that is 68,000 and fair value of NCI that is 20,000 minus 65,000 the fair value of net assets of S that is made up of 50,000 share capital and 15,000 retained earnings of S hence the goodwill is 23,000 similarly add up the current assets of both P and S that is the end of assets side under equity section share capital is to be reported only for P that is $100,000 Group retained earnings are calculated by adding PS retained earnings of $70,000 given in the question plus 75% share of post acquisition profits of S. Now the NCI is calculated by adding up the fair value and 25% share of post acquisition profits of S and then finally add up the current liabilities of both P and S.